uh, liposomal formulation is given as a 90-minute uh, infusion. Um, it does not have to be given through a central line. However, since it contains donorubicin, there is the concern that it could cause a vesicant reaction. So I typically use um, a central venous catheter for administration. But it's a 90-minute infusion on days 1, 3, and 5. At day 14, if there's persistent disease, but there's been some side of reduction in the study, and what's recommended is to give two doses of Don Rubis, uh, of the liposomal formulation on days one and three. The dose there during induction is 44 milligrams per meter squared of the Don Rubis and 100 milligrams per meter squared of the cytarabine in each of those doses. For the consolidation, it's days one and three, um, 90 minute infusions at a lower dose. Because it's only a 90 minute infusion, um, this can be given in the outpatient setting. In fact, in the clinical trial, half of the patients receive consolidation as an outpatient. I think my, my only cautionary note would be if giving that drug during induction, um, giving liposomal formulation during an induction in the outpatient setting, the patient has to be well-educated to come back to the clinic in the, in the event of any bleeding symptoms or fevers, um, have transportation back um, uh, to make it uh, so that safely can be given uh, to patients. In the clinical trial, almost all of them received the liposomal um, formulation as an inpatient. So one, one challenge in this patient is the fact that he just had a myocardial infarction. And what is not clear from the uh, history that's given to us is exactly how was the myocardial infarction handled. Uh, in my experience, um, uh, it's often very difficult for a cardiologist to consider um, uh, angiography and stent placement because these plate patients ha um, have low platelet counts and they won't be able to tolerate being on double antiplatelet agents uh, for very long. And clearly this, this patient has um, uh, an acuity with the leukocytosis that requires him to be treated very quickly. Um, giving an anthracycline shortly after a myocardial infarction is um, obviously a concern, but if, his, if he has preserved left ventricular function, I would go ahead um, and do that because otherwise his options are very limited. Um, I don't think the hypomethylating agents would be a good option for this patient. Um, in terms of saying that this liposomal formulation has less cardiac toxicity, we can't say that from the clinical trial. In fact, um, in the data reported to the FDA, um, there was 20% incidence of non-conduction cardiac toxicity from both 7 plus 3 and from liposomal formulation. Now, I don't expect a 20% decrease in LV function in my patients getting 7 plus 3. That's permanent from the anthracycline. I think what we were seeing there is in patients with sepsis, there's a transient decrease in LV function. But it was the same in both arms. And I think the po important point there is that we can't specifically say that the liposomal formulation, just because it targets the marrow more than the free drug, will have less cardiac toxicity. And so it's recommended that we consider the dose of donorubicin um, uh, in the liposomal formulation equivalent in terms of its cardiotoxicity as it's given in the free form IV. So you need to calculate total anthracycline exposure for your patients, especially those who may have treatment-related AML and been exposed to anthracyclines before when considering giving this drug. This patient is a, a, a very challenging patient, and, and um, the outcome was excellent. And I think this is an important message here. You know, in the acuity of the situation, we need to get this patient into a remission and um, try to get him to the only curative option for his disease, allogeneic stem cell transplant. Having said that, even without transplant, liposomal donorubicin and cytarabine improved survival compared to seven and three. So in a patient, in a patient with a proliferative acute myeloid leukemia um, who has myelodysplasia-related changes, in this case by cytogenetics or treatment-related AML, I think um, the um, randomized phase two study suggested and now the pivotal phase three study confirmed the superiority of liposomal donorubicin and cytarabine over seven plus three in the way we've been giving it for the last 40 years.